Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Reverend Candace Shibata, and I am joining you from the Buddhist Church of Stockton. It's November 21st, 2021, and we're gathered here today to observe the Hoonkul service or the memorial service for our founder, Shinran Shonin. Um, and this is for the Buddhist Church of Lodi and the Walnut Grove Buddhist Church. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, I'm so happy to see um, some of you gathering at the, the Walnut Grove Buddhist Church. And um, I'm sure it's nice to be able to see each other in person as well. So again, thank you so much for tuning into this very special service. Okay, so we'll start today's service with the uh, tolling of the bell called the concho. And as I mentioned in my services, the concho is a way for us, um, it's a signal, and it's um, allowing us to prepare our, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, um, so that we can be present in this very moment. Um, if you can recall, um, and this is something that I always remember um, growing up here at the temple, um, the concho was something even the children were aware of. So when the concho, the tolling of the bell would start outside, uh, all of the children would, would quiet down and be quiet and, and adults as well. So again, this is a, a reminder for us to be in this present moment together. So you can um, maybe just put in the back of your mind all of your worries and all of those things on your to-do list that you have to do and just um, be mindful of this present moment that we're here together, okay? So please take a moment to have quiet sitting with me during the tolling of the bell or the concho. Okay, so thank you so much for sitting with me during the, the tolling of the bell. I hope um, it was a, a nice uh, opportunity for you to sit together um, and to really be mindful of this moment. As we know, it will never be recreated. So um, it's an opportunity for us to really be together um, as one to hear the Buddha Dharma today. Okay, so I'd like to share my screen with all of you so that we can continue with the service. <clears throat> Okay, and as I mentioned, um, today is the obs um, observance of Hoonkul, Shinran Shonin's memorial service. And uh, this is a wonderful opportunity, whether we observe it in November or in January, depending on which calendar we follow. Um, it's an <clears throat> opportunity for us to really um, show our deep appreciation and, and praise Shinran Shonin uh, for all of his tremendous um, teachings and guidance in regards to the Nembutsu, um, and of course, um, sharing with us um, Amida Buddha's uh, infinite wisdom and compassion for all of us. So what we'll do, we'll continue with the opening meditation. And for this, I prepared um, just a short opening slideshow with um, some wonderful um, music in the very beginning. Okay, so please sit with me during opening meditation.
Namo Ami Dabatsu. Namo Ami Dabatsu. Namo Ami Dabatsu. Naman Dabats, Naman Dabats, Naman Dabats, Naman Dabats. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those um, beautiful pictures of uh, Lotus. Um, lotus blossoms and they were actually I think a collection of pictures um, from when I visited Taiwan and also um, from Sacramento from the, the park in Sacramento as well. Okay, so we'll continue the service with the chanting of Sambujo. And as I mentioned during our service together, Sambujo is actually a hymn called Three Respectful Callings. And we call upon Amida Buddha, the historical Shakyamuni Buddha and the Buddhas of the Ten Directions to be present today. And so this is a, a beautiful hymn um, that we utilize to welcome these Buddhas um, during this service. And this will be followed by the Hyobyakumon or the dedication or declaration of why we're gathered here today. Okay, so please join me in the chanting of Sambujo. <coughs> We are gathered together in the presence of the Tathagatha Amida, the embodiment of wisdom and compassion to observe the Walnut Grove Buddhist Churches and the Buddhist Church of Lodai's annual memorial service for our founder, Shinran Shoning. The Nembutsu teaching has been transmitted through the seven spiritual masters. 
and we gather to acknowledge our gratitude to Shinran Shoning for having clarified and transmitted the valuable Nembutsu Dharma. Please join me in Gosho. Namu Wami Dabutsu. Namu Wami Dabutsu. Namu Wami Dabutsu. Namman Dabutsu. Namman Dabutsu. Namman Dabutsu. Namman Dabutsu. Namman Dabutsu. Okay, so I'd like to continue the service with the chanting of a portion of Shoshinge. And uh, Shoshinge, as you know, is uh, the major work or magnum opus of Shinran Shonin. And um, this is a wonderful opportunity to um, chant a portion of it, um, although we won't be doing the, the uh, hymns and the Nembutsu together, but we'll be doing um, the first portion of Shoshin Nembutsuge. And um, during this uh, major work of Shinran, He's um, actually um, paying respect and, and homage to Amida Buddha and also um, praising Shakyamuni Buddha and later on also praises the seven masters as well. And the seven masters include um, Buddhist teachers from India, China, and Japan. And um, <clears throat> Shinran Shonin especially selected these masters because of um, the, the teachings of the Nembutsu that uh, he felt were um, the most important teachings in regards to the Nembutsu. Okay, so um, I'm sure it's kind of like riding a bike. We may not have um, chanted nem uh, Shoshinge um, in a while, but uh, once you hear um, the melody, um, I'm sure you'll be able to um, pick right up and hopefully it'll bring a sense of nostalgia to you as well from when you previously chanted it. So please take a moment with me to chant uh, this portion of Shoshinge. <clears throat> Kim Yeah, 
極神剣教大教義、即応調節合悪主、一切善悪本部人、門神妙大愚世眼、仏言古代証言者、善人妙不打理け。みだぶつほんかねんぶつじゃけんきょうまんらくしゅうじょうしんぎょうじゅうじじみなんなんちゅうしなんむかしいんどさいてんしろんげんちゅうかじちいきしこそ、けんだいしょうこせいしょういみょうにょうだいほんぜよき、しゃかにょうだいりょうがせん、いしゅうごみょうなんてんじく、りゅうじゅうだい自主と性、質量な<咳>財産を無限、戦絶大乗無常、召喚疑似者は楽、賢治難行独独、信行異行指導楽、僕ねみだぶつほんがん、じーねんそくじ、にゅうひつじょう、ゆいにょうじょうしょうにょうだいご、おほだいひぐぜよん、てんじんぼうさつろどんせつ、きみょうむげこん、しゅうただけんしんじつこうせのちょうだいせいがんこういうほんがりきえこいどぐんじょうしょういしんきにゅうくどくだいほうかいひつじゃくぬだいえしゅしゅ特殊電芸造世界、即小心療法小人、有本の臨現人図、入所寺音寺予言、音信動乱了天使、上古乱所菩薩来、三蔵流四十状況、本上千行気楽法、天神菩薩論中言、報道医が建設願、暴言猫ゆたりく、少女死ゆい新人、わくぜんぼんぶしんじんぽつしょうちしょうちそくねはんひしむりょうこみょうどしょううしゅうじょうかいふけどうしゃけしょうどんなんしょうゆいみょうじょうどかつにゅう万全自力変言集、円満特語感染症、三不三死刑音言、増末を滅道秘因、一生増悪地偶然、死や尿害、症、
Namanda, it's in Amanda, 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 it's in Amanda. Okay, thank you so much for chanting a Shoshin Gay with me at home and, of course, at the temple. Uh, we'll continue on um, with the, the three treasures. <clears throat> okay, so uh, to continue, please join me in Gacho. Three treasures. Hard is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. We do not deliver ourselves in the present life. No hope is there that we shall be freed from suffering and sorrow in the ocean of birth and death. Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of your way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves your supreme will. I take refuge in Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha. May we all together become units in true accord in your life of harmony, in a spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through ages of myriads of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teaching. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namandabutsu. 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 Okay, so we'll continue the service with the Dharma message. And um, I'm, I'm so honored to be able to um, share my message with you today. So um, to begin my message, will you please join me in Gosho? Such is the benevolence of Amida's great compassion that we must strive to return it, even to the breakings of our bodies. Such is the benevolence of the masters and true teachers that we must endeavor to repay it, even if our bones becoming dust from the collected works of Shinran, hymns of the Dharma ages. Namu Amidabutsu. Namu Amidabutsu. Namu Amidabutsu. Namandabutsu. 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 Okay, so thank you everybody for um, joining me today. Um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, this is a very special occasion for us um, as we are observing Honko, um, and this is the memorial service of um, our founder, Shinran Shonin. And so by definition, in the word Honko, so Hon means to return um, of gratitude, and Ko means the clarifying to clarify the meaning of or gathering. So today is a day in which we gather to remember and show our gratitude um, to Shinran Shonin. And so how fitting this is for us to be able to conduct this service. Um, how many days? A few days uh, close to Thanksgiving. And so um, this morning for my uh, Sunday Dharma message, um, for the three temples that I'm supervising. Um, we talked about Thanksgiving at length and um, this great gratitude that we, um, we should have, um, not just during the holiday of Thanksgiving, but of course, 365 days of the year. And so how do we fit all of this in with Ho'onko and this gratitude um, that, we, that we should have in our hearts and minds? So you might be thinking, one, well, how does Shinran Shonin's life, a life that was lived such a long time ago, relate to my current life today? And so um, 
we have to really think about if it wasn't for Shinran Shonin's understanding of the Buddha's teachings, we wouldn't be able to gather today as a Sangha. So again, however, it might be a little bit difficult to um, think about Shinran Shonin in today's light. Um, however, we know that his teachings have been transmitted, trans, um, transmitted for over 800 years. And so we can even think about Shinran's life and how relevant his life is because of all of the di different conditions that he endured um, during his life, such as um, the different earthquakes, the famine, the diseases, um, and so many different conditions of that time in Japan, and how we might be thinking about how those are actually occurring today. And so um, I think Shinran Shonin really knew how it, how it was to live during a time of suffering. And um, again, we can think about those teachings as we're living today. So um, I might have shared this in other messages, but Shinran Shonin's life um, and his writings really do resonate with me. And um, I think not just because I'm a minister and, and I studied um, some of his teachings or his writings, um, the collective works of Shinran during my time at the Institute of Buddhist Studies, but also as a young woman. And I've mentioned before that um, Shinran lost his parents when he was quite young. And I too lost my mom when I was fairly young, maybe not as young as um, Shinran, but um, I think early enough in my life where it has made a different, uh, difficult impact um, on my life and, and um, but beautifully how it's trans, I guess, translated into something else and, and allowed me to um, pursue the ministry as well. So my mother, she passed away when I was in my 20s, when I was only 25. And um, I think, again, because of that, I'm very drawn towards Shinran's writings that include parents. And so he actually mentions uh, parents, maybe not so much his own parents, but relating uh, the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, and also Amida Buddha to a uh, mother and father. And so I think um, those of you that have lost a parent or possibly lost both of your parents um, and experienced the grief surrounding this, you too can think about um, then consoling maybe some of your other friends and being very compassionate to those um, or having something in you um, be um, brought up again in regards to your own loss and grief when maybe somebody around you has experienced grief as well. As well. And so, um, again, a lot has happened and um, in Shinran's life, which then prompted um, his uncle to bring him to Shoren In Temple in Kyoto, Japan. And maybe some of you have actually um, visited that temple before. And so, um, again, this part of Shinran's life, I, I really love telling this story um, because it really does illustrate um, how impermanence has affected Shinran, um, even as a little boy. And so again, when Shinran and his uncle arrived at the temple, it was very late in the evening. And so the monk who received them thought, um, maybe it would be better if we waited until the morning for you to become a monk um, to do the ceremony so that um, little Shinran could enter um, the temple as a monk. So again, even at the age of nine, Shinran Shonin um, must have known through probably the death of his own parents and what was going on around him that tomorrow is never guaranteed. And because of his strong feelings, he um, recited the following poem that he made up um, right on the spot. And so little Shinran at the age of nine said, cherry blossoms that are felt that uh, to last till the morrow may well blow away during the night. And so because of this very beautiful poem, uh, Shinran was ordained that night. And um, this is why when we're um, receiving our first level of ordination, our tokodo ordination, um, this scene, this um, ambiance, this feeling is recreated at uh, Nishihonganji for us as well. And so all of the windows are boarded up and um, it's very dark in the temple, in the main temple. And um, all we're lit with our candles. So it's a very beautiful sight that we're so um, privileged to see when we're getting ordained and um, allows us to really think about, or at least in my case, to really think about all of those conditions of my life, all of those people in my life 
um, who supported me and allowed me to also become a minister as well. And so again, um, Shinran Shonin um, talked about this life of the cherry blossom um, and how important it was for him to be ordained that night. And um, as you know, um, they, they live such a short time and um, how beautiful they truly are for us to be able to enjoy them um, before, again, the winds of impermanence blow them away. And so this uh, cherry blossom is very symbolic of impermanence um, in not only in all life, but truly symbolic in Buddhism as well. And so um, I think because of this short lifespan of the cherry blossom, we're encouraged to live our life to the fullest possible because in an instant, anything can change. And um, our loved one can be taken from us very quickly or unexpectedly, or even our own lives um, can come to an end um, even before we have an inkling that it, it's going to come to an end. And so, again, um, cherry blossoms, they really do have a special place in my heart. And I still recall, I think, Reverend Hasagawa, Charles Hasagawa, the, the minister here in Stockton, um, uh, when my mother was still alive and she was working here, um, he actually took this really beautiful picture of her um, and she was underneath maybe not cherry blossoms here at the temple. I think they're almond blossoms, um, but it was a really beautiful picture that I can still remember um, her when I when I close my eyes and how beautiful her smile was. And um, so I think because of that, they have a special place in my heart. So I actually have um, a story that I wanted to share with you in regards to my own painting of cherry blossoms. And uh, this occurred when my friend from Australia came to visit me. And we actually met when I was living in Japan. And he spent, I believe it was close to three weeks um, with me kind of sightseeing um, the, the Bay Area and um, just we just had a really wonderful time. And so what I wanted to do was actually take him to a paint night. And so this was in um, this uh, little uh, shopping area of Alameda at the time. And uh, paint nights, uh, which allowed us, they're called paint and sip. So you could actually um, drink a glass of wine or whatever your beverage of choice is and have a good time and, and be all together in this, uh, this shopping center in, in Alameda. And so at the time, I, I think they were relatively still new and very popular, um, and they're still um, out there, um, I think, going on now, now that the pandemic has has uh, lifted just a little bit. So when I started painting, um, it was a cherry blossom tree um, in the evening, and actually it was a lot harder than I expected. And I don't know if some of you might be good artists as well. Um, but doing this on the spot was again a lot harder than I expected and I had I had always enjoyed the arts um even drawing and painting when I was little but I don't think I had much talent um whether or not this can be cultivated in in my adult age I'm not really sure but I still always appreciate um art and going to museums and and admiring the artist's work and so as I was sitting there I think the very first stroke of the brush and with the paint on it was the hardest part because from the beginning I knew I didn't want to mess up and however each step seemed to get even more difficult obviously because we were then concentrating on the very fine details of the cherry blossoms so each participant if you can imagine we had um, our own little station set up and again this was pre-pandemic so our seats were fairly close together and so we each were given an easel with um, our canvas paints and brushes and um, our workspace was rather small and I, I found myself sitting very very close to my easel and so I was up like this painting um, and I had to remind myself to sit back a little bit um, so I can see the whole picture and not just um, one little detail of my of my painting that I was probably getting very upset about. So as I began painting these little cherry blossoms, they just look like maybe faint blobs of pink paint. And I was really unhappy with them because I pictured them so differently in my mind. And I, as I added 
more cherry blossoms to my canvas. Um, I added maybe some yellow for the middle, some maybe darker pink um, flowers. So it kind of had a, a contrast of these light and pink, uh, light, light and dark pink flowers. And so my canvas began to fill up and I was able to take a step back and even lean back a little bit in my chair to be able to see it. And so I actually wasn't so upset as I initially was when I looked at it. And I thought to myself, hey, this like looks like a Monet painting. And so definitely maybe not quality of Claude Monet, but I thought to myself, it looks like a Monet. And so um, and this is, again, a, a painting that's probably maybe much more appreciated, not when you're looking at the tiny details, but when you take a step back and you really look at the whole picture. And so um, I was getting a little bit more intrigued with Claude Monet. And um, on a website, um, artable.com, um, I read the following quote, which was really fascinating. Um, this quote said, Monet and his fellow Impressionists sought to depict life in a style that was unlike anything before. The style of Impressionism meant the color and the light that created it were at the, front, the forefront of an image. So um, it went on to say that human figures and epic tales took a back seat and the manner in which the sun or the moon bathed objects in different types of light were of key importance. So basically, it was the light of Monet's um, um, paintings that were the most important. So even though there might be images of, of um, people or different figures um, in the painting, it was the light and the shadow that was most important during this time. And so this fascination, Monet's fascination with this light and dark, this light and shadow, um, also really resonates with me too. And um, so during this time that we were painting, she was trying to show us how to create the shadow with our paint, paints as well. And so even at the temple, of course, we talk about light and dark um, quite frequently. And there's many references to light, such as Amida's guiding light, the light of compassion. And um, I wanted to talk about how this light um, really relates to Honko. So in the book, as um, I'm sure many of you have, it's the purple book called A Jodoshinshu, A Guide. It states that even at Honganji, during this time that we're celebrating Honko, um, there's so many different events that um, they do to celebrate this observance. And so this could include different sermons, um, talks, different rituals, and of course the fellowship of, of um, fellow Nembutsu followers. And so this gives us an opportunity to hear the light. So this is how it's, it's, it's described. Honko activities allow us to hear the light of um, Shinran Shoring and of course Amida Buddha. And so the light of Amida Buddha and the teachings of Shinran Shoning, they guide us to see our lives as it truly is. So again, sometimes we need to take a step back to realize this because I know sometimes um, we're just filled with may many anxious feelings or maybe some grief, some feelings of loss, some feelings of sadness, and even sometimes moments of happiness that might blind us from really seeing life as it truly is. And so we kind of have to take a step back, definitely like during the time when I was painting my picture. So these teachings really allow us to put things in, to, into perspective, especially during our most difficult times. So the teachings also remind us that we are human beings filled with daily stressors of everyday life. And even though we might feel um, incomplete or maybe sometimes imperfect, just remember that we're perfect just as we are because we're always embraced by Amida Buddha's um, wisdom and compassion and of course the primal vow of Amida Buddha as well. And as I was mentioning early on um, when we were sitting during the conch show, um, it allows us uh, to be fully mindful and present 
um, and not to worry about our imperfections or or even remind us not to worry about that to-do list that is waiting for us on our computers. And so with my painting in mind, um, this really allows me to appreciate the Nembutsu teachings even that much more, to remind me to um, be present, to be here, here and now, because again, this moment will never be recreated. And I had to remind myself of that as I was painting with my friend Sam, because um, it really was an opportunity to think about the friendship that we created in Japan and how that still um, remained, even though we had to depart ways and, and go back to uh, United States and to Australia. And it allowed me to really think about um, maybe this um, art project that I've never done before, even though I felt like I was making mistakes. And so it really allowed me to be mindful of that present moment, to be fully um, present with my friend. So while truly reflecting on Shinran Shonin's life and his teachings and all of his writings, I think about um, my life and how I am affected by his teachings that um, were expounded so many years ago, and of course, um, the Buddha's teachings as well. So despite every up and down that I might have, I'm reminded of how fortunate I am to truly live this life, this one and only life that each of us have. And sometimes, again, it takes a moment for us to take a step back to gain perspective of that moment or maybe situation that we're living in. Um, but also be very grateful for that moment that we do have. And so um, I think this has allowed me to maybe lessen some of my worries into thinking that everything will be OK in the end, despite maybe um, the, the anxiety that I might be experiencing. But again, everything will be OK in the end. And so to conclude my, conclude my message, I wanted to actually read um, the Gobunshu or letter um, written by Renyo Shoning. And um, as you know, Renyo Shoning was our eighth um, head um, priest or minister within Honganji. And he actually wrote um, this uh, letter called the chapter on the teaching of Shinran Shonin, which I felt would be very fitting um, as we're observing um, his memorial today. So please join me by bowing your head in reverence as this letter is read. Chapter on the teaching of Shinran Shonin. Shinran Shonin taught that the essence of Jodo Shinshu is Shinjin. The reason is that by abandoning all other practices and completely entrusting ourselves in Amida Buddha, our spiritual rebirth is assured by Amida through the inconceivable power of the primal vow. This is known as entering the ranks of the truly assured at the very moment of Shinjin. Thereafter, all utterances of the Nembutsu should be understood only as expressions of gratitude for Amida's assurance of our spiritual rebirth. With reverence, I remain. Please join me in Gashō. Namo Amidabutsu. 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 Okay, so thank you so much for allowing me to share a few thoughts with you during um, my Dharma message. I wanted to uh, share my screen again and continue on um, with the, the singing of Ondok San number two. Okay, so please join me um, during uh, the singing today.
please join me in Gosho as I read the translation. The debt of gratitude I owe to Amida's great compassion. I will proclaim until my life disintegrates into dust. The debt of gratitude I owe to my Dharma teachers. I will express until my bodily form is finally shattered. Namu Amidabatsu. Namu Amidabatsu. Namu Amidabatsu. Namandabatsu. 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 Okay, and so to conclude, I thought that we could read the Jodo Shinshu Creed number two together as well. Please join me in Gosho. I affirm my faith in Amida's infinite wisdom and compassion. Reciting the sacred name, I shall live with strength and joy. I shall look to Amida's guiding light. As I reflect upon my imperfect self, I live with gratitude for the perfect compassion which surrounds me at all times. I shall follow Amida's teachings. I shall understand the right path and resolve to spread the true teachings. I rejoice in Amida's wisdom and compassion. I shall respect and help my fellow beings and work for the good of my community. Namu Amidabutsu. Namu Amidabutsu. Namu Amidabutsu. Namandabutsu. 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 Okay, so um, that will conclude um, today's service. Thank you so much for joining me. And of course, um, we'll, uh, we'll at least um, put it on the um, Stockton and, and Lodi uh, website, or not website, but YouTube page, so that um, maybe some members who didn't get a chance to join us um, can view at a later time. Um, are there any announcements from um, any of our members it's so good to see everybody okay so what i can do is um i can go ahead and um actually stop our recording and then we can say hello to each other as well so again thank you so much um, for joining us today and um, please have a wonderful thanksgiving holiday and we'll see you again at our next